look at Amonton's Law. Amonton's Law relates uh, pressure to temperature when the volume is held constant. So here's the apparatus we're going to use. It has a sealed sample of air in it. And this is a rigid container whose volume is not going to change very much with temperature. Uh, and up here I have a gauge that measures the pressure. Now, this is measuring the absolute pressure, which means it's um, not at zero right now because this sample here is about at atmospheric pressure. This dial is in pounds per square inch, sorry, not a metric unit. But if you'll remember, maybe you remember, uh, atmospheric pressure is about 14.7 pounds per square inch or a little bit less than 15. 15 is right at the top of the dial. That's where you're seeing it right now. So it's registering atmospheric pressure. We're going to cool down this device and see what happens to the pressure. So I'm going to clamp it in here. So it's sealed number of moles of gas this sample uh, is fixed so we're not changing the number of moles of gas uh, the volume is fairly fixed so we're just looking at the relationship of temperature to pressure I'm going to put it inside of here and get geared up In this Dewar flask right here, very highly insulated vessel, I have some liquid nitrogen. Now, nitrogen, which is the main constituent of air, most of air, close to 80% of it, is nitrogen gas. Nitrogen gas, when you get it down to about negative 195 degrees Celsius, condenses, turns into a liquid. Uh, so its boiling point at atmospheric pressure is about negative 195 degrees Celsius, and I'm pretty sure that's the temperature we're at right here. Let's take a look at some and pour a little bit out. And when I pour it out, it immediately boils. You don't see any liquid flowing around right there. We're going to use this to cool this. I could cool it by putting it in a freezer, but that would be boring. So we're going to cool it with this liquid nitrogen. And keep an eye on what happens to pressure as I do so. So keep an eye on the gauge. see the pressure starting to decrease. We're down to 10 pounds per square inch. And it could probably go lower, but I ran out of liquid nitrogen. Now we're down to nine pounds per square inch. So as you see, for a fixed number of moles and a fixed volume, if you decrease the temperature of a gas, the pressure decreases. That's direct proportionality. Now let's see what happens if we increase the temperature. do this really lightly here. We immediately see the temperature, the pressure starting to go back up. Okay, we're about up to atmospheric pressure. Let's see if we can get it a little bit higher. I 
And we see the gauge up here starting to go past our 15 pounds per square inch, past atmospheric. And uh, you can see it, that as you get it warmer, the pressure increases. Now, I'm not going to take it much further because I don't particularly like dealing with high pressure gases when I don't need to. So when we got it cool, when we cooled it at a fixed volume, the pressure dropped. When we heated it, the pressure increases. Temperature down, pressure down, temperature up, pressure up. That's direct proportionality. 